Hello everybody, it's Lazel here with another episode of Pimp My Castle. Today we are taking a look at the castle of Ravi Bling from the Kingdom 1205 and we are about to jump right into it. First of all, we always answer the basic questions. So he is castle level C36, he got it recently, congrats on that. His troop combination is infantry archer and occasionally he plays cavalry archer, okay, interesting. His player type is that he is not much of a spender. He prefers or he really enjoys the solo play because it allows him to test the strength of his build, which I totally understand. And he also likes to speed attacks and defense traps. I think that's interesting that, that's get men uh, that that gets mentioned out, that he likes to play with defense traps. It's something that... I think it's interesting we did it very early in our kingdom days especially when we had civil war but nowadays we don't do it anymore and um yeah he baits a lot when the play in when we play in loss events so for example in the uh, void war for example he maybe offers himself as a castle or they have a castle in their alliance that is used as a bait I think it's interesting because usually I think that on the defending side you don't get that many points as if you are on the attacking side. So you're most likely always losing when you are defending except for you're defending with like 60 players against 20 attackers. That's a different thing. But from what I know defending is always the worst outcome because like point wise except you're completely outnumbering your opponent. But that's not about in this video. We are taking a look at this castle right away. So as he said, he is a C36, Lord level 52. So still quite some Lord levels ahead of him. From his gear parts, we'll take a closer look soon. But from the first look, stamina recovery on 16 out of 100. I like that. He has some outstanding emblem upgrade so it's currently the thing okay what is he working on maybe on his emblems or also on his uh, gambling of gear parts so we better jump right into his equipments starting off with a wonderful orange perfect heart with the damage increase when attacking enhancement i cannot say anything against that the perfect gear part when you're an infantry archer player Followed by the fiery crossbow with double archer attack, cavalry attack and march speed. And a damage against infantry boost enhancement. I think that's a wise play. I personally play with the angel attack enhancement. But I do think that going for damage related enhancements there is better in my opinion. Simply because it has way more impact than the basic attack enhancement. But the attack enhancement is a bit more flexible. The Enhancement, for example, in this case, damage against infantry boost is only powerful against infantry. But when you're solo attacking a castle, you will always first run into the opponent's infantry, except for your opponent doesn't have any infantry. And there's always infantry in a castle, at least from my experience. I've never attacked a castle where only cavalry was inside. So I do like that enhancement. Followed by the Crown of Praise, so still the level 30 gear part. This will probably be a 100% forge to the next level with the enhancement of reduces damage taken from mages, which I really like as mages are a common unit in this game. Followed by the Dusk Boots, Cavalry Attack and Archer Attack. These are actually the best boots that you can have on C30 for, as an Archer player, simply because of the additional Archer Attack. There will probably be another equipment for the stamina recovery, but also here damage taken reduced when attacking perfect enhancement on this one. We have a level 35 Radiance belt with Archer Attack and Cavalry HP, Angel HP, Raise Wounded Limit and damage increased when attacking. Super dope. Do have to say level 35 purple, this will cost you a lot if you're going to gamble it and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe a level 30 belt would, would have been better there and first gamble it to um, orange quality and then go level 35. But that's a common thing you guys already know by now. Level 30 Templar armor is the best armor for infantry players in general, in my opinion. You have the double infantry defense enhancement and infantry has a higher defense than all of the other units in the game. So this one is great. Reduces damage taken from archers by 13%. I really like that one. He's really splitting up his enhancements to diversify all of his reduces damage taken or damage dealing against enhancements. It's super dope. I do really like that one. Cannot say anything against this chest part. Coming to the second page. 
is followed by the perfect heart and purple quality and damage increased when defending. Interesting. So as he stated in his um, intro questions that I like to ask players, he do he does like to do the defense. Uh, he does like to play uh, as a bait castle or also simply playing defense in, in star runes. I personally wouldn't do that simply because I'm kind of like always low on materials and I really want to spend them in a way that they really help me out. And I personally think that why do I need to defend really good in the star runes? Like what is my advantage from that? There are no really rewards or anything like that. And as I have stated earlier uh, about the defense, I think that defense, is, for example, in Void isn't as effective as in... Um, yeah, in any other scenario because the points are calculated differently. But there's also the motivational or emotional aspect about that. When you, in the beginning of Void, trap your opponents once and that really good, like as I explained earlier with 60 players against, for example, 20 players, you will make a profit out of that one and you will definitely break the fighting spirit of your opponent or at least you will definitely leave a big scratch on that one which will help over the long run in Void Wars. So I do see that point but for me personally I'd say okay I'm not that fan of a defense player also because I'm not willing to sit there and permanently wait to get hit but that's up to everybody themselves. I think it's interesting to see somebody that really commits to the defense play style in the future Good luck with that. I hope you will have some great defenses and we will see you about that. Followed by the Royal Crown, he, di he did mention that he occasionally plays Cavalry, which I think is interesting with the double Cavalry HP enhancement. Angel Limit reduces damage taken from mages, so this is probably one of the gear parts that is used when he plays with Cavalry. I do have to say... This is uh, what I often state that simply spreading all of your obsidian st uh, steel, spreading all of your materials over several sets of gear parts is something that I personally wouldn't do. I would focus all of my resources just on one good gear part or on one good set of gear parts simply to have those gear parts as efficient as possible and as strong as possible. But that's everybody to, uh, up to everybody themselves. As a C36, he might still think about mm, what do I want to play in the future. As he said, he occasionally plays cavalry. So it's interesting to see that people are still considering stuff there. Followed by the Eternity Belt, which he uses as his Angel Limit uh, Increaser. It has the Angel Limit and, um, Basic stat itself. And there will be an Angel Limit Enhancement soon. Okay, all right. Followed by another purple radiance belt with damage increased when defending. Followed by the celestial armor with reduces damage taken from mages. Also for the cavalry playstyle, a dragon rider boots. I don't know what those are for. Maybe he will use them for forging purposes, gambling purposes. Followed by another noble badge. Oh, he needs it for the increased wounded limit when he is defending, probably. I don't know. Same for the Noble Badge. Maybe also for the increased wounded limit. A lot of gear parts in here, guys. Um, we have a Holy Crossbow. I would say take this Holy Crossbow there and re-roll the enhancement to Stamina Recovery and wear this Holy Crossbow over, the, um, over your normal playtime simply for the additional Stamina Recovery and the Recruitment Speed Up in it. Level 30 Templar Crown, Dragon Scale Belt, finally seeing that one, that's super dope, also with the fitting enhancement of recruitment speed up, I have the same, but I have it in orange, so maybe gamble that one to a higher quality, followed by a Dragon Scale Crown, okay, maybe for the healing speed, Sacred Boots, these are the ones that I talked about earlier, this one, you know, these are probably also... Um, Constantly equipped for the additional stamina recovery. And then we are close to coming to an end here. Dragon scale armor. Okay. What for? Maybe the healing speed. Another Templar armor, which is going to be equipped with the recruitment speed up soon. So that's going to be the recruitment chest. Super dope. A Dark Lord Guard, maybe or probably also wearing constantly for the additional stamina recovery and with the Angel Limit Enhancement, super dope there. 
And we see another pair of Dusk Boots, which will get the damage taken reduced when defending enhancement soon. So what I do have to say, there are a lot of gear parts in here. I personally, from what you're saying, your playstyle really reduced yourself to one attacking uh, set of uh, gear, uh, gear parts, one for defending and one for farming. As you do like to play defense, then make one good set for defense, one good set for offense and one set for farming and maybe come clean with yourself and really say, okay, I do want to focus infantry or cavalry as my front line. I know that ain't easy. It also took me a lot of time, but as so as the sooner you make that clear, the better your future investments will be. We continue with something that we rarely have here in the Pimp My Castle episode. We will take a look into his high technology. You can see that every basic level was done. And then we get to the superior leadership three out of five. So a few K of army size improvement there followed by melee attack, ranged attack, melee HP, ranged HP with the note of he might max all of that technology. Um, level 45 high tech. First, before pushing castle level up to C40, I did wrote him an email back where I said that I personally would always focus higher castle level and higher troop quality. Also, simply because of the fact, imagine sitting now at C36 or C37, let's go for the best case scenario on that, and recruiting tier 12 cavalry all the time for several weeks, months, however it takes, how long it takes to uh, max out your high technology. If you would take all of the time and push it into getting to C40, you might maybe not get to C40, but you would be way closer. And from C40 on, you can recruit your, your uh, tier 13 troops. And while you are already recruiting a lot of the strongest troops in the game, you are, or you are getting a lot of additional time out of that. And while you are recruiting, you are catching up with all of the technology stuff and uh, uh, the high technology. But if you stay at C37, you will, yeah, you will probably recruit those tier 12 units, but you could also be already recruiting tier 13 and then end up with being a C40. And once you have ca uh, caught up with your high technology, you would then have like a few hundred K of tier 13 without speeding and you would have maxed out high technology. But if you're sitting there and you will first do all of your high technology upgrades and then get to C40, you will be a C40 with maxed out high technology, but still playing with tier 12 for quite a, for quite a while, which is why I would always rush for castle level first. That's my point about high technology. We will take a look again into his beast level 26, 21 out of 100, super good to see. About the skills, we have the Smothered Flare. When troops are attacked by angels, damage taken is reduced by 18.5, super dope. Anti-infantry, force expansion, attack expert. I do like to see Smothered Flare. I think it's a strong skill and can be very powerful, especially when you do like to play defense. People that are solo playing usually always bring the maximum amount of angels and when you reduce the damage of those angels, you are always in a good position. So I do see the pick of your smothered flare. Anti infantry interesting. With the other skills, we have the life source on level 19. I have often talked about the skill now. I do still have it. I think I have it on level 20 or something like that. But I'm not investing in it, in, uh, into it anymore, as I think that those damage related beast skills are simply way stronger. And also playing with the anti angel skill, also very powerful when you are attacking or defending. Super dope to see those angel beast skills in one of the beast inventories here. Super dope, I do like your beast very much. Let's jump into all of his artifacts and there is a lot in here. All right, let's start off. Excalibur, fourth star, level 33, very dope. Apollo's bow, one of, well, probably the best artifact when you're an infantry archer player. I think there are a lot of stats on the Apollo's bow. I think it also has the infantry attack on it. So you're also profiting from that one. Probably the best artifact that you could have picked. Athena's Aegis also profiting for your infantry, Kellet Witch, Heavenly Spear and 
This array alone looks super dope. Heavenly Spear, Excalibur, Apollo's Bow, Athena's Aegis, Skeleton Witch. I think those are constantly equipped. Yeah, you can see. And then we will take a look into all of the other artifacts. A lot of them got a reset. Golden Armor, yeah, doesn't really make sense for you as you just occasionally play cavalry. If I were you, I do really have to say stick to infantry archers. You have already invested so much into the troop combination. Stick to it and really optimize your gear when it comes to that. A bit lower we will see some artifacts that I think that I personally think you can give a reset. You can give the Ganjiang Moje a reset. It is a strong one but you can reset it. You have way stronger artifacts. Joyous, keep it. Gusli, you can also reset it. Look at your array above with all of the artifacts equipped. You don't need a Gusli anymore. I do have to say that I do really like the Gusli but I don't think it makes any more sense in your array. Joyous, as I said, keep it simply because of the additional recruitment speed up but from the artifacts themselves so far I do really like them. I also think that you unlock the correct artifact skills here. Don't unlock the Excalibur skill. I think it doesn't really make sense as it only works against one castle but the others super dope. Evenly split I do also like that and yeah great array from the first look. When we take a look into the rest of his artifacts we will see the uh, Chukunu I think you can reset that one. I don't see a reason why you still want to keep it. Maybe for the additional archer damage in certain events. But um, yeah, I would consider resetting this one. Boots of Speed, 4th star, level 30. Perfect. Keep those. Super powerful. And yeah, I do see them very often. I still don't really get it. The Draconite and the Book of Thoth. I do see the point of the additional healing speed and building speed up, research speed up, all of that stuff. But I wouldn't invest artifact EXP into those. Let me know down in the comments below how you think about those artifacts. But I simply wouldn't invest into them simply because I know, okay, at some point you will reach, um, you will reach those um, yeah, research levels, those building levels where you don't need those artifacts anymore. And even if it, if it takes a few more hours or maybe a day longer, you can still speed those. I am... Um, swimming in, rec in not recruitment speed but in building speed ups and in uh, research speed ups i don't really understand why people often invest into those aside from that i have to say your artifact array looks super dope we will take a look now into his mystic college starting off with a screenshot of his angel mystic college he has the blazing soul on level two and he is questioning if he should go for blazing soul three and flame missile one yes i think you should simply to unlock the additional damage of the flame missile 4.5 percent you can simply have them and get additional damage out of it or you can stay at zero for a very long time and simply don't get the benefit i personally would go for this one followed by his archer mystic college and here's the same question as no azurite has been invested so far i do have to say that due to the fact that you are constantly playing archers the split arrow, arrow is a great skill and same as the flame missile from angels it should be unlocked at least on level one simply so you have the chance to trigger it but i would make that dependent on the fact of if you are fighting a lot if you are still in a development process and if you're playing, for example, Void just once a month and it's, uh, outside of that not that actively playing or uh, fighting in general, then I wouldn't do it. But as I assume from your playstyle what you're saying, you are still fighting a lot. So then the split arrow is simply a great skill to maximize your damage output. I would go for the level 3 and the level 1 here after you have reached a certain breaking point for example level c 38 and uh, and you are able to promote your angels for example by upgrading the guardian temple and then you can make a little break there and catch up with some mystic college but then still rush for the c40 but still make it to a certain level c46 i definitely would go for one or two more castle upgrades there and then catch up with a little bit of mystic before going for the c40 or maybe still rust c40 from from c38 on but uh, that's in the end up to you i personally just want to say that the flame missile and the split arrow skill are skills worth unlocking 
The uh, infantry mystic college here is something where I would say you can leave that one behind. You can still grow that technology in other ways. You can get uh, damage reduction from inf uh, for infantry from other things. You don't really need to spend that much azurite right now. At some point, yes, you will have to catch up because the toughness skill alone is very powerful. But not right now. You don't need it right now. Followed up with his cavalry. Mystic College, I personally would say focus your infantry and archer playstyle and leave that one behind. I don't see a reason to spend any more Azerite in here. Last but not least, we come to the Colossus or to the Colossi. And here I do have to say, okay, level 90 Archer Colossus evenly split over the, all of the levels. Maybe you can still optimize it from now on if you get more Titan Crystals and so on and so on. But overall, yeah, I cannot really say anything against that one as you are probably focusing on get, getting the level 90 skill simply as that. So that's fine for me. But in the future, try to optimize it by bringing the damage increased against infantry and cavalry a bit up. The Archer HP and defense can fall behind a little bit, but you will probably need more Titan Crystals until then. And last but not least, we come to his Colossus for infantry level 74 evenly split everything and I think you can optimize that one a little bit get four levels out of that one and maybe optimize your Archer Colossus as I have just said but overall you totally got the point how to split it and it looks really dope I think you have a very strong castle but I do have to say it could be way stronger if you would focus more, focus your enhancements, focus your gear parts, and by that also your material spending. And make sure to always wear your farming accessories simply for the additional stamina recovery. I don't know if you are in a kingdom that is constantly in civil war, that would be interesting to know. But overall, I do have to say, never forget the development aspect of stamina recovery in your castle. That is what makes castles powerful in the long run. But aside from that, you have a great castle. It looks super fun. And from time to time, I do think that playing defense can be super dope. And your castle is definitely set up for that. It looks very cool. And yeah, overall, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Pimp My Castle. And then I would say, see you in the next video. Goodbye, guys.